So the other day, I went into the living room and my wife and kids were sitting watching Stranger Things, the last episode. And I don't ever watch Stranger Things. I mean, I've sat in on a couple episodes or so, but I don't really know the series. But they are totally into it. And this was the final scene. I'm not going to give away what was going on, but one of the things that I heard was the Kate Bush song, Running Up That Hill. that people have been talking about for weeks. And people have been asking me, Rick, are you going to talk about the song? Kate Bush is an incredible artist that I've been listening to since 1978, since her first record. She was discovered by David Gilmour. As a matter of fact, one of the only live versions of this song is from 1987 with her and David Gilmour. That's really one of the few live performances. Kate Bush did not perform live for most of her career. It's fascinating that this song has risen to the top of the charts. Number one song in the UK oldest person to ever have a number one song Kate Bush is 63 now if you go back to her first record The Kick Inside which came out in 1978 a quintessential 80s song it starts out with this beautiful pad the first thing that grabs you in the intro is just that beautiful pad just the note c and e flat so lush and airy and sets up the whole mood for the song and then the drums come in really busy actually the chord progression that's going on here is a flat major then b flat sus four sus two to c minor the song is in c minor then you have the synth melody that comes in over these same three chords right here the chord progression it goes to the third of the A flat chord then the sus2 of the B flat chord and then to the flat 7 to the root of the C minor chord this descending minor 7th interval jump from B flat to C happens either with B flat G C or just B flat C but that is really a main hook in the song, is this really large, kind of unusual interval jump to have in a song. There it is. Before the vocals come in on that second chord, the B-flat chord, there's something specific about that that gives the song its vibe. So on the first chord, the A-flat chord, is just A-flat major. But the second chord, that C and E flat hold, and it becomes a B flat with a sus two and sus four. In a second, you'll see why this chord is so important in the chorus. This video is brought to you in part by my upcoming live shows in Seattle and Los Angeles. Click the link in the description to be part of a live What Makes This Song Great and Ask Me Anything from the audience. Next, Kate enters with the first verse. Notice how the vocals just jump in almost off rhythm with these 16th note upbeats. All those big intervals. She goes from this really fast moving melodic singing to this ethereal Kate Bush sound. And then, the chorus just jumps out right there, just kind of out of nowhere. You're coming from this verse, which is very rhythmic with a lot of offbeat accents, into this chorus that suddenly hits. The song is about a man and woman switching positions so they get each other's perspective. And they've made a deal with God to do this instead of making a deal with the devil. It's so clever. And if I only could, I'd make a deal with God and get him to swap our places. Be running up that road, be running up that hill with no problems. Just beautiful imagery. Right there. 
There are two dissonances that happen right here in the chorus that make the song great, make you want to listen to it over and over. The end of the first line, she says, and if I only could, and the note could is on the note G, and that's a major seventh of that A flat chord. And then she says, I make a deal with God. That is the money note right there. Deal with God. Hear that dissonance? The dissonance that D is rubbing against the sus4 of the B flat chord. Because that B flat chord, remember, is a sus4, sus2. When she sings that note, it gives you a sense of longing. And this is really what makes that chorus sound so beautiful. Great lyrics. Beautiful. And it's just mood. This is just all mood. Beautiful. All those answered vocals. That's a great line. Oh. So she goes from the intense singing, doubled, harmonized, and then she comes back with the ethereal line. And then, beautiful. Brings it down. I mean, it's really jarring. The lyrics are incredibly good. The concept of the song, the way that it works with the visuals of Stranger Things, it just works with the scenes that it's in. I wish I could show you some of them. I don't want to spoil it for anybody that hasn't seen it yet, especially in the last episode. I'm so happy to see people rediscover Kate Bush, who's absolutely brilliant. Absolutely a brilliant writer, lyricist, a visionary in that she was producing her own music and doing her own thing really before just about anybody. She didn't go out and do live gigs. She didn't do anything that you had to do to be famous back then, except write great songs. And that is a lesson right there that I think still applies to today. If you don't know this record, Hounds of Love, you should definitely check it out. Go back and check out Kate Bush's entire catalog. Love to know your comments on this. Thanks so much for watching.